This is a complete bolt-in kit to electrify a VW T2 campervan. Welcome to EDUP Services and today on this extra special video we are going to be talking you through what you see before you. This is a fully finished 10 years in the making electrification kit for a classic VW campervan. We're going to go through this in detail and we're going to talk to you about the availability to yourselves if you have a vehicle here in the UK or if you are one of our worldwide partners where we can ship this kit to you anywhere in the globe. My name is Kit Lacey, director and founder, and let's see what makes this electric conversion kit so special. So let's get right to it. I mean, you're obviously all very eager to see what this kit contains. And what's so unique about this is that we have designed every single piece of it. So this isn't the case of us supplying bits and components and parts and things that you might then have to cobble together yourself. We've done the harder bits of not just designing the kit and all the components, but as you'll see from what we're looking at, we've also designed all the wiring looms. We've designed the lengths and the connections of where those need to go. And we've designed all the fabrication system, which you can see here, which is connecting to original mounting points within the glorious VW. Now, before you hear, this is a crossover VW, which strangely has a late bay back and an early bay front but we only care really about the engine bay here of how the mounting points are fixed and as you can see from the fabrication in front of you this kit is our 37 kilowatt hour battery pack it's about a hundred mile range um, give or take and that's real world it's not projected and this is our smaller of the two kits so our bigger kit has a third battery box that goes underneath the chassis um, which you can't see here but that's where it goes on this subframe section if you look at here you'll see that it's got some mounting points on the two front edges. There's one this side and another on the far side. Then you've got an engine, uh, a gearbox mounting point right here in the center and another gearbox mounting point on the back. So for a second, think about where an engine and gearbox used to be. So your gearbox would have been about here and your engine would have been about here. And so we've used the original mounting points to pick up off on those because obviously the camper van was designed to hold weight in those areas. So that's what we've designed. We've also then had to take into effect the space inside the vehicles so as you're raising this up, because again, unlike some classic cars where you install engines from on top, camper van, you've got to come in from underneath. This has all been designed to be able to allow you to do that. So you would roll it under the vehicle and then you'd lift it up with a gearbox lift or a pallet truck to get it inside the vehicle, connect it on to the two side mounts and the back mounts, and that's most of the hard work done. As I said before, it's two battery boxes, so you've got control systems running between the two of them, making sure that things like your contactors, which are controlling the high voltage, are safely working inside each. So here on the side of what we call the petrol tank box, that is your high voltage socket. That is not live, and it won't be live unless the whole vehicle is safe and turning itself on. So you can stick your fingers in that all you want. Nothing will happen. Inside it is a contactor that is safely controlled by so many parameters to make sure that everything else is working safely before that box goes live. The main box as well, you've got your access hatch on the front. Ideally, you never have to go inside this access hatch, but if you're a trade customer, there might be a few things that you'd have to connect up at the last stages within this front hatch. On the side of the box here, again, from an assembly perspective, we've got loads of connections on here in terms of IO uh, in-out looms for low voltage. You've got your coolant um, in-out looms on there, and that's pressure tested. Um, to make sure that your coolant is running great for your rapid charging. You've got, again, high voltage sockets and BMS sockets on that side point as well. All in one really tidy location in the same kind of place within the camper van where all of the looms normally are. The looms are normally over in that corner. So it's quite normal to have everything in that space. The glory piece right here. This is a Tesla drive unit. Yes, this is a Tesla powered camper van capable of up to 290 brake horsepower. That's a silly idea. Don't turn it up to 290 brake horsepower. You will break something, either yourself or the vehicle. So when these are supplied, they are obviously out of old Teslas, but the units themselves will last forever. Um, a, a motor and a gearbox, as long as it's kept lubricated, don't wear down unlike a, a other parts of a vehicle. So this is an absolutely fine piece of kit. And we replace the logic board inside the inverter so that we can control it in a very different way. 
That gives us tons of parameters to make sure that it runs efficiently, runs properly, and we also reduce the power and the acceleration uh, within that as well. Make sure that it's not taking off too quickly, that it's not going to break anything, that it's not going to um, cause any damage or any uncomfortableness. We always say when we're designing vehicles is that if it doesn't matter how flashy and wonderful it is, if you get in the vehicle and it doesn't drive well, it's absolutely useless. So we've put a load of time over the last decade working out what works well in terms of parameters to make these work really, really brilliantly. So the Tesla drive unit is perfect because as you can see, it's really compact and it sits right underneath where the gearbox used to be and you've got custom drive shafts that connect that to the wheels and drive it really perfectly. The other things you see in front of you, we've got all the looms that we mentioned before. Those are running from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle and everything else in between. So here we have our custom dash. It's available in any color. It doesn't have to be orange. It's just the orange matches the vehicle in this particular case. And on here, you've got everything you need. So instead of us adding dials and switches to all over the dashboard, you've got your dials here that replicate the original dials. You've got your power gauge, your miles per hour, and then your battery capacity and range and your inverter temperature as well. You've got your gear selector, it's very simple, obviously no more gear stick, it's automatic, no more gear stick, no more clutch. You've got literally forward and reverse, and it's all built into the dash. Your cool air vents will slide through here, those are original to let cold air come through. And in this conversion we've got our heating, so these are two high voltage heater bricks with a fan, and they are controlled by this little switch here, which is turning on the heater bricks coming from the main battery pack, giving you instant hot air that's then going to blow up through those original coolant vents and give you, for once, hot air in your camper van. All of these again built in with looms. You've got a throttle pedal on the back. This is really unique, this throttle pedal. So it looks like the original and acts like the original, but an original throttle pedal is not fit for purpose. It's on a bit of a cable on a cable on a cable. It's not very efficient at controlling the power that you now have really efficiently. So this new throttle pedal is a really simple system and it's gonna be able to, it matches to the floor exactly where it used to be. You won't feel it any different, but you'll know the power that you've got because it's really delicate and able to control it really well. And that's also programmed in with regen braking. It's the ability that when you're slowing down to put the energy of the motor back into the battery pack and the throttle is really great at controlling all of that. All of those are then connected through to the back of the vehicle which is where the battery box is living. I'm going to try not to stand on anything. We also install this. So this is another reason why our kits stand apart from any other camper van conversion kit that you've seen online and that is this beauty here. This is CCS rapid charging. This one is built into a shape of uh, aluminium, which fits in the original petrol tank space. So it bolts onto the outside of the vehicle. It's covered with these hatches here to keep it nice and protected from the elements. And it's the simplest thing in the world to plug in and make work to be able to charge at rapid speeds of up to 70 kilowatts. That means you can recharge your camper in less than an hour. So a CCS stands for combined charging system because it's not just doing your DC rapid charging, but it's doing your AC home charging or destination charging as well. You may have spotted on the subframe here that the onboard charger is mounted as part of the fabrication system. And that deals with your onboard AC charging, which will recharge this particular camper van in around four to five hours. It would recharge our bigger camper vans at again the seven kilowatt speed in around eight to nine hours. Also on there, you've got your DC-DC converter. That's effectively your alternator. What that's doing is taking the high voltage from the battery box, moving it into the low voltage for the 12 volt system. And speaking of 12 volt system, let me tell you all about this. I'm gonna go so far as to say this is our pride and joy. <laughs> this is what is called an ECB. It's an EDUB control system. Every electric vehicle needs obviously some uh, of the car control systems, but also some of the electric vehicle control systems. And when you are converting a classic car that already has car control systems, fuses and relays, which in a camper van are located at the front of the vehicle, you need something like this. Now this is intentionally designed to be exactly the same footprint as the original starter battery. So it fits in that space on the shelf to the side of the engine bay holds a new lithium ion 12 volt starter battery, much smaller because it doesn't need the same crank rate that an original engine needed, which means it's much more efficient. Plus with it being lithium ion, if there is any problems of parasitic drains or anything added to the system, even though we've put loads of control systems in to stop that from happening, if this ever does discharge by a mistake within leaving things on, then actually at about 10 volts, it'll turn off. It won't damage itself by going below 10 volts, which a, a lead acid battery would do. If you self-discharge or if you discharge a lead acid battery, then you've got to throw it away and start again. Not with this. This will last you forever. 
Also within here, you have your isolator. If you're going to leave your camper van for many weeks or months unused, which is reasonably common with camper vans over the winter months. And then all the clever gubbins underneath here. Now, what these are connected to is mostly around safety to do with the battery management system that's inside the box. There are loads of battery management systems available on the market. We choose one of the best, which is an Orion system. And we do that, it's probably a bit overkill for what's needed, but we do it because it's got so many safety parameters that allow the system to work incredibly safely. And it means that we can program a lot of it and kind of customize it to make sure it just runs great. And that's what all of this does as well. So inside here are tons of fuses and relays that relate to all of our systems. Obviously fuses to keep everything protected but relays in there to really accurately control what you can use when. So if the battery management system, for example, picks up a particular error within the system or doesn't like the way that something looks, then it will stop you from doing other things. And again, likewise, it'll only let you start to do certain things when it's taking care of all the rest of it. Now, if you've driven an electric car before, if you've driven an EV before, then all of this stuff happens behind the scenes. You turn the vehicle on and within three seconds, it's finished all of its pre-charged circuitry and you're away to drive and you never know about it. But I'm just kind of letting you know that we know about it and we've taken care of it. And it comes in this tidy little box. So we're very, very proud of that system. But as I said before, the DC-DC converter is keeping that top top to every time you've got the ignition turned on or you're charging, it will keep this top top as well. Now the charging system, when we designed our battery management system profile, we were very aware that a camper van is very unique in how it charges. It's not just charging from rapid chargers or uh, destination chargers, it's charging from campsites. So along with your conversion, you are given a charging cable that connects to a campsite plug. In the UK, that's a Chadamo blue circular socket. And on that cable is a little brick that's a control brick that actually intelligently changes the charging speed depending on what you dictate. Now, most campsites in the UK have an average of 10 amps of supply. If you try and pull more than 10 amps, then you're going to trip the system. This brick on our charging cables that are provided with your conversion let you set the rate of charge. So you might go to a super fancy glamping site that's got 16 amp supply. Wow. You can change the brick so it can charge at that speed. Likewise, you could go to a really rural site where the electricity isn't that great, but you're staying there a few days, you're staying overnight, so you can turn that down all the way down to six amps if you need to, which means you're at least still getting some power in the vehicle. That charging system also allows you to turn on, again using the ECB system, it turns on tons of other stuff. So it allows you to turn on things like your display, so it can show you your live charging speed. Also lets you turn on your stereo system, so your stereo isn't going to drain your battery because it's charging up your 12 volts. And also we can set it to power loads of other stuff internally. Many of our conversions, especially as they're camper vans, have induction hobs fitted inside, which lets them use the main battery pack that you have here to then power an AC induction hub. We will go into that in more detail in probably another video because it's too much for this one. But just know that all of your power use, even off grid, is available with additional things to an EW conversion pack. As I said before, everything is provided straightforward. Um, if you're coming to get your conversion fitted by us here, this just means that we can do it quicker. We've got all this worked out, we can get everything printed in advance and we can get your conversion turned around before the summer starts. If you're a trade customer and you're looking at supplying EDUB conversion kits to your customers, then it means that your job of doing that is as simple as possible. Also included in that is you get tons of support. So we are not just going to be shipping you a kit and then never speaking to you again. We're lovely Yorkshire folk. We are going to be on the end of the phone uh, giving you uh, specific support, not just initially with the training to get the conversions sorted, um, but also with any aftercare support that comes with that as well. And please, if you've got any questions about the exact specifications of the aftercare support package, then get in touch, head to our website and contact us with the form there. But as we said, we've mapped all of this out so it fits through the vehicle. We've done it all to DVLA specification as well. So we're not modifying the vehicle anywhere within the chassis or the monocoque. That means that if the DVLA come out and start to ask some questions, which I will be honest with you, has never happened with one of our camper vans. We've had DVLA inspections on other conversions, never with a camper. But if it was to happen, you are, can be rest assured that this is going to pass no problem because it's attaching to original engine mounting points and it's not going over the point system that means that you have to change your registration. So as far as the vehicle's concerned, we give you a piece of paper that says that it's now registered as electric. You send off your V5, change the fuel type from petrol to electric, and that's it.
any other benefits that you get from electric, such as, I don't know, there might be free parking in some places or you less zones, they all get taken care of without you having to think about it. That's the only thing that you guys need to do. Insurance, again, with camper vans, having an electric conversion, most insurers we speak to really couldn't care less. All they care about is the value of the vehicle and whether that's made a significant difference. So you can de declare to the insurance company how much your vehicle is now worth with a need of conversion connected to it, and they will cover you for that amount. We've had some great success with Just Campus Insurance, uh, Brent Aker Insurance, Alan Boswell, some of the greats um, are all very familiar with classic car electrification insurance. So don't let that concern you at all. Thank you so much for watching. It's been great to show you the developments that we've made here at EDUB Services. If you're interested in an electric conversion for your Type 2 camper van, then please get in touch. Our website is edubconversions.co.uk, where you can find loads of information in our learning center, and you can contact us to discuss your goals for electrification. If you're a trade customer, again, go to edubconversions.co.uk co.uk forward slash trade and you'll be able to find a page there with information of supplying these kits to you and your garage where you can either supply them to other garages within your continent or you can fit them out yourself to customers and we can talk about the support packages available for those options too. Thank you again for watching. If you have enjoyed it, then please subscribe and like the video. If you think of someone else within your network who would also benefit from learning a bit more about electrification of type 2 campers, then why not share this video with them? Thanks again for watching and we will see you next time.